Maybe we photographers don't require text very often, but there's bound to be times when we do. Let's take a look at a simple technique in Photoshop that combines the text with the image. Now I think the hardest part of this technique is actually finding the right image. An image where you can wrap your text around the subject. But let's give it a try and I'm going to go to Select Subject. Now that looks to have done a pretty good job. We can always help it along a little bit, but really we're looking for a subject that's quick and easy to select. I'm going to go back to my select menu here and I'm going to go to select a mask just to put a little bit of softness into that selection. One pixel is probably going to be more than enough, so I'll click OK to that. And then immediately I'm going to copy what's within that selection to a new layer. Control J will do that. Now I can turn this off and you can see we've got a pretty good selection. Certainly I think it's going to be good enough for our needs. So I'm going to select layer one and apply a layer mask. But then I'm going to select back to my background, go to the toolbox to select the text tool, click into the picture surface and I'm going to type the word glass. Now moving my cursor a little way away, I can drag my text down. It looks as though it's behind the glass because it's sitting between the two layers there. But what I'd like to do is to hold my control key here because we need the glass text to be fairly large because it needs to be able to wrap around things and without that we lose the effect. Let's guess that we've got it right here and I'll hit the tick and I'll hold the control key and I'll drag down the glass and we'll decide exactly where it's going to be positioned. I think we'll put it somewhere around there. Now straight away I'm going to go over to my layers on the right hand side because anytime we're using text, text always stays live on its own layer. But if I hold the control key and I click the text layer you can see we get an instant selection. Now I can select the mask above and we can decide which parts of the text stay in the foreground and which parts go behind the glass. Now this is the easy part but we do need to go to the toolbox, select black as our foreground colour. We're going to select a normal soft edge brush. I'll make that brush a little bigger. From the top of the screen the opacity and the flow I'm going to leave at its maximum. So what I could do here is allow the tip of the letter G here to go behind the glass but here I can mask over this to bring it into the foreground so you can see now how it's entwined around. We can leave it behind here. The L well it's only just a little bit hidden so we'll keep that where it is. Here what I could do is to bring the top of the A through but leave the loop behind. Over here we've got choices here too. Let's bring this around there and we can see that around there. Whoops, I did that a little wrong. I don't want to go over that part. So if you make a mistake, hit the X key, switch from black to white, make your brush smaller, make your image bigger and you can undo any little mistakes you make, touching the X key to bring the black back to the foreground. Here I could choose to have, let's say, we'll have the glass showing or the S showing in the foreground there and we'll let the tail of it tuck behind the glass. To get the effect let's hit Ctrl D and we can see the selection removed. Now we can select the glass text layer, go down to the effects and we can choose, let's say, a gradient overlay. In the gradient overlay I've got it ticked. The options, well we've got lots of those. We could pick anything we feel is appropriate to the image. Whatever we choose we can add maybe a little stroke line to that. And that looks okay. The three pixels on the outside in black. 
Now let's switch that to the inside because when we switch it to the inside you'll notice it crisps up around the edge because we're using a mask so putting that stroke line on the outside is not quite so efficient. Anyway let's click OK to that and we can see the final result. Now because I'm using glass as a subject I can allow it to show faintly through the glass in places. To do this, mask just as before, but set the flow rate to a very low 2%. Now I'm sure you can take this idea from here and apply it in different ways. I'll see you next time.